Okay, so this is Phys 2320 Computing 2, and this is Unit 4 in the set of video tutorials on strings. And in this video tutorial, we're going to concentrate in particular on regular expressions. So the first thing we might want to know is, well, what do we mean by a regular expression and why should you know about them at all? So the human brain is actually remarkably good at recognizing patterns in data and figuring out how to extract meaningful information from a large mass of information it's being given. Doing the same in computer code uh, is both remarkably difficult and also far more common than uh, you'd like for something which is a difficult task to go and do. And a very common example in particular is using computer code to extract some uh, text from a much larger body of text around it. And this in particular is what regular expressions are designed to help with. So to go and show us uh, how we can use regular expressions, we're gonna, in this uh, video tutorial, we're gonna work through a set of examples based on University of Leeds computer usernames. So the University of Leeds IT usernames um, uh, have a particular pattern and we're going to figure out how can we extract those particular usernames from blocks of text. So if one looks at a bunch of usernames then one can realize that um, they, they have a particular pattern to them and in the case of our uh, usernames uh, if you have a student who is first registered um, by the School of Physics and Astronomy then they always get a username that starts PY but simply looking for words that would start with PY is not going to be good enough because you, for example, would match um, Pylon or Pygmies or Pyramid or indeed Python. So looking at this problem a little bit further, we might then realize that, in fact, a, a username has the, um, for, for a physics student, is PY followed by two letters that are the year in which that account was first created. And then this is then followed by some more letters uh, and also sometimes some numbers um, that are derived from the student's name. So we can start to build up a pattern that we need to look for. And this is what regular expression is gonna be used for. And in Python, regular expressions come in the RE module. OK, so the RE module. So this is part of the standard uh, Python library. So it comes with every install of Python and you get at it by simply importing RE. So to actually use this module, we have to go and define the pattern that we're going to be looking for. Um, and regular expression patterns are written as strings, all bit with kind of what's going to be quite an opaque and often a rather complicated syntax. And what we have to do, first of all, is we have to compile that string. And that means convert it into a representation that the computer can more directly work with. Um, and so the first thing we do with the uh, re module is we uh, use the compile function and we'll compile our pattern. And then once we've got our compiled regular expression pattern, we're going to search or match that pattern to a particular string. Uh, and then we're going to get a result that tells us information about how that string was matching um, uh, the given pattern or how the pattern was, was found in the string we were looking at. Okay, so our first pattern, um, we're gonna start off relatively simple. We're gonna just start by looking for something that starts PY um, and then has the digits two, two, and then some letters. And what I'm going to show you here first, I'm going to show you the pattern we're going to write, and then we'll go and explain how it comes together. So the uh, pattern uh, is created by using read.compile, and we're going to pass it in this string. So the first thing um, uh, we need to uh, note is that the string we're going to use is a raw string. Um, uh, meaning that we have a leading R. And that's because, as we're going to see later on, in regular expressions, we use lots of backslashes. And in Python strings, backslashes um, are used to go and escape things. And if you actually want to have the backslash in your string, 
you end up having to double backslash it and it gets really, really complicated and messy. So by using a raw string, we avoid that, that particular problem. So the first part of the pattern is straightforward. It's just the letters PY and then the digits 2, 2. The next part of the pattern um, is enclosed in square brackets. The square brackets in a regular expression are used to indicate a match uh, of one of several possible characters. So in this case, we're saying we want to match the characters A to Z. We could also have written this as A, B, C, D, E, uh, e F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, and so on. Um, but writing this as a range is often easier. Well, it's shorter, um, and it also has uh, less chance of you accidentally missing out one letter um, as you typed it. Um, and then the final part of the pattern is the plus sign. And what the plus sign means is that I want one or more uh, of the preceding part of the pattern. So in this case, what I'm saying is I want one or more letters A to Z. So to make use of that pattern, we then use the match or search uh, methods of the compiled pattern. One of the things you're going to see as we go through this is that um, in the RE module, in the RE module, you can either uh, produce a pattern and then use methods of the pattern, or in most cases, there's a function um, in the RE module where you can supply the pattern each time as a raw string. Um, and because compiling the, the pattern from the raw string is, is um, quite a uh, complicated task for the computer to go and do, in many cases, if you're going to use the pattern over and over again, it's better to compile the pattern and then use the pattern's methods to work with it, work with it, rather than using the function versions from the re module where you have to compile the pattern each time you use it. So um, the difference between match and search, match will go and look for the pattern we have defined at the start of a string, whereas search will look for it anywhere inside the string. And then there's also actually a full match, which will try and make the pattern you've supplied match the whole of the string in one go. But generally speaking here, we're mainly going to use search. So we're going to look for our pattern anywhere within the string we're looking at. So here's how we use it. We first of all defined a string. Um, and you'll see that string contains a couple of uh, uh, usernames in it. And now I go and use pattern.search and pass it the string. And I'm going to print out what the, the result is. And what it prints out is, uh, it's not particularly obvious what it is, but it it's, describes itself as an re.match object. And it tells me that this is a span of 28 to 35. And it tells me it matches PY 22J and S. Well, the um, span of 28 to 35 is telling us that it found the, the string it's matched at between characters 28 and 35. Uh, in the string. Um, so that is telling us that it has successfully gone and found the pattern we were looking for in the string. If we haven't found that pattern, then the result would have been set to none, um, the special null variable, not null value you have in Python. Um, so um, if you do find the pattern, um, then you get this regular expression result object. And that regular expression result itself has a number of methods and attributes that you can use to exactly figure out what it is that has been matched there. Um, and so here I'm just printing out the results of calling some of the, the uh, attributes, some of the methods. So there's a start and end method uh, and a span method. And as we saw previously, when I just printed out the whole of the results object, it did actually tell me what the span was, but here I can actually dig in and actually get at those values. Obviously, I don't have to just print them. I might want to actually use them to, say, uh, manipulate the um, string. So if I wanted to, say, find all the bits before I'd hit the match, I could use the start, uh, the result of the start method to work out what characters I needed to go and include or where I needed to slice that string up in order to get the bits I wanted. Um, there's also the dot group method, which you can use to return the actual matching part of the string. And so if I do result dot group, it tells me the, the bit of the string that matched. 
OK, so that was kind of a very simple, straightforward case of using a, a regular expression pattern. But we need to kind of do things a little bit more sophisticatedly. So the example we've given just now was great for addresses which started PY22. But the 22 part is the bit that's used to uh, record the year in which the account was created. And probably ideally what we'd like to go and do is find PY followed by any combination of two digits. So we could match things not just from 2022, but also from any other year. So in the example we used above, um, we've specified a range of characters by placing them inside the square brackets. So we could write a pattern like this. So we could say PY and then square brackets zero to nine, and then again in square brackets zero to nine, and then A to Z and plus. So um, the way we'd read that would be therefore that we were looking for one digit, then another digit, and then our A to Z any number of times. But um, actually for writing complicated regular expressions, you end up, um, I mean, the actual way you define a regular expression is almost like a mini programming language in itself. And uh, so it, it's um, quite often has some little shortcuts you can help to do with it, <laughs> help to write these patterns. Um, and in particular, there's a set of shortcuts for different types of characters. And these are what are commonly called character classes. So some of the ones we end up using a lot. Well, if you put backslash D, that can be used to represent the digits zero to nine. Uh, but it'll also, if you're working with international character sets, include other things that are treated like digits. Uh, backslash S is used to mean white space. Um, so this includes um, obviously space characters, but also tabs, new lines, carriage returns, and page feed characters. And again, on international character sets, anything else which is treated like um, non-printable characters, non-printable non space characters. And then the other one I want to introduce is backslash W, which is used to mean alphanumeric characters, which again on a Western alphabet is the letters A to Z, the capitals of A to Z, the digits zero to nine, and actually in Python also the underscore character. And again, if you're working with international character sets, that'll include anything else which is treated like a, uh, a, a letter uh, type character or digit for that matter. There are then capitalized versions. You see, these are all lowercase d, s, and w. There's then capital D, capital S, and capital W, and they are taken to mean the opposite. So backslash capital D means anything that is not a digit zero to nine, and backslash S means anything which is not a white space character, and so forth. So we could take our uh, username recognition pattern and we could rewrite it like this. So I'm still saying I want the letters P, Y, but then I say I want um, a digit and then another digit and then one or more alphanumeric characters. Um, so uh, this handles the fact that we've both got two digit years, but also that you might have digits in the um, last bit of the username where you've got to have two students who have the same initials from the same school in the same year, and you somehow have to uh, disambiguate them. So we can check our pattern uh, works um, by having a shot at actually trying to uh, match it against a bunch of different email addresses. And we're also going to make use of another uh, regular expression uh, searching method called find all. So here's our string. It's got a bunch of different usernames. And then I've um, taken my pattern and I call find all passing it the string. And you can see what I get back is a list of the substrings that matched it. So this is what find all is doing. Find all is just returning a list of all the strings it found that match the pattern. And that may be fine. That may be all you need to go and do. But of course, you've actually lost some of the information you had there from the actual regular expression match objects. So if you want to get at the regular expression match objects that for all of the possible matches in a string, then there's a find iter method which is designed to work inside a for, a for loop. So here's an example how you'd use it. So we're doing four results, sorry, four results in, and then pattern.finditer, and then passing it the string. And so what findditer is doing is it's 
finding the first matching pattern I've given it and it's returning the result object. And then when I call it again, it then starts the pattern matching going at the next uh, from, from where the last pattern match uh, finished and carries on. And it keeps on repeating around until it doesn't manage to match anything any longer. And so you can see it's printed out the four email addresses, but it's told us in terms of, of the match object. So you can see um, that it's also giving me the spans. It's telling me exactly where in that string those usernames were being found. So that's us now extracting much more flexibly. You see it's picking up um, both different years and also usernames which have numbers uh, embedded in the, the last part of them. OK, so um, the next bit we might want to look at then is what happens if we have to have a, um, a lot of match, a lot of repeating of the same match. So you saw we use the plus sign to say I wanted one or more of the preceding match. But actually, a Leeds University username, that last part of the username is always between two and four such characters. Um, so we can actually specify, rather than specifying one or up to an infinite number of matches, we can say I want between two and four by specifying the number of matches we want inside curly braces. And so I put curly braces after the bit of the pattern I want to repeat. If I put just one number between the curly braces, I say I want this exactly that number of times. And if I put two numbers separated by a comma, then I'm saying I want between the first number and the second number of such matches. Um, and therefore we can rewrite our pattern a bit further. And now it can look like this. So we have the letters P, Y, and then I say I want a digit and I want to repeat that exactly twice. Um, and then I want a alphanumeric character and I want to repeat that between two and four times. And so that's gonna become the pattern we're gonna to use to recognize our username. And I'm just going to call find all again with the same string we had and just show you that it does return, still returns the same username. So our, our pattern is still matching. Uh, of course, as you're developing a, a regular expression uh, uh, pattern, it's always good to go and test it with some test cases because it's really easy to go and, and write a really complicated regular expression and then have it not work the way you, you were expecting it to work. Um, and right at the end of this uh, uh, unit, I'll point you towards a website which will go and help you uh, develop your regular expressions um, uh, as you as you work through them. OK, so there's still a problem with this pattern. And the problem with this pattern is that if we have the string happy 22 very long, then that actually matches our username, despite the fact that that's not a, a username. So it thinks there's a username py22very embedded in that string. Whereas again, you know, human brain is quite good at spotting that, no, that's not a username. That's just something which looks a little bit like a username buried in the middle of a longer string. So how can we help ourselves out around that? Well, there's another character class that we can go and use to sort this out. And that is backslash b. And backslash B is used to indicate a boundary, uh, a word boundary. So very loosely, we're going to define a word as meaning it's a sequence of alphanumeric characters and it's bounded by some typically white space characters. And what backslash B matches is it matches the bit that goes from white space to alphanumeric. So strictly it's matching a zero length string that is at the start and the end of every word. That's really useful because we can rewrite our pattern now like this. So we now say we want a word boundary followed by PY, followed by exactly two digits, followed by between two and four alphanumeric characters, and then followed that by another word boundary. So when we go and use that on our original string, you see again it returns um, all of the um, uh, uh, path, all of the usernames we had before. But now when we apply it to that second string, where it was happy 22 very long, it says, no, it doesn't match. It returns none. Um, uh, and then uh, that is is because when that, that very long string 
the didn't start PY, it started HA, uh, and it didn't finish after between two and four alphanumerics after the twin uh, after the two digits. Um, it carried on a bit longer than that. So we're we're now able to much more cl closely identify um, uh, valid usernames, but avoids things that are not actually usernames at all. 